Hello, my name is Shane Young, and I'm with Bold Zebras, and today we're going to walk through installing SQL Server 2014 Service Pack 1 step by step. We're going to do this as part of the series we've been having on setting up SharePoint Server on-prem. Whether it's SharePoint 2010, 2013, 2016, they all pretty much have the same SQL Server requirements, and so we're going to walk through how those work. The environment that we're using here is the one we built in Video 1 in the series. So you can actually click the pop-up button there to take a look at that video if you uh, need to get an environment going before you install SQL. And also because I know some of you are using SQL 2014 and some of you want to use SQL 2016, uh, there's a separate video available for SQL 2016 right in the same series. So you can check that out by clicking this other pop-up box. Cool? Enough jibber-jabber for you? Me too. Let's jump in. Okay, so to get started, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log into our SQL Server VM. So I'm going to hit the old control alt delete. I'm going to put in our secret password. And now that we're logged in, uh, what we need to do actually before we install SQL Server is we have to put .NET 3.5 on the machine. Uh, it's one of the software prerequisites. If you don't put it on before you do the SQL Server install, you'll actually get an error message halfway through the, uh, the process. And so we, to avoid that confusion, we're just going to go ahead and put that on now. So to do that, I'm going to open up our friend Server Manager. And I'm going to click on Manage, and I'm going to say Add Roles and Features. We're going to say Next, Next, Next again. And on the Roles page, we actually don't want to add any roles right now, so we're going to leave that blank. So we'll say Next. And then uh, we're going to choose, we want the .NET Framework 3.5 features. So we'll put the checkbox there, and we'll say Next. Now on this screen you notice we have a yellow bar. Hey, you need to specify an alternate source path. One or more of the installation se selections are missing source files on the destination server. That's actually really important to note. So what's happened is because we installed from the ISO image and that's not connected to the machine right now, it knows that it doesn't have all the files it needs. And it's trying to give us a hint that we need to go find those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to Media and DVD Drive and we're going to say Insert a Disk and we're going to make sure that we have our Windows uh, server disk in. So we'll put that in right there. And then once we have the disk in, we're going to say we want to specify an alternate source path. And for this, we actually need to enter the location. So for us, if we go over here, we can see that we have a D drive. That's what our Hyper-V is using. And if we were to right click and say open there, we'd see there's a sources and then an SXS folder. And so that's what it's looking for. So we're going to type that in here. Um, yours will be blank when you get there. So do D colon backslash sources backslash SXS. Say OK. And now we're ready for the install to happen. All right, so now while that install is running and gunning for us, we need to do something else, and that is acquire the uh, SQL bits. So for SharePoint um, Server, in this particular scenario, we're going to use SQL Server 2014 Service Pack 1. We're going to use the 64-bit edition, right, because SharePoint only runs in 64-bit. And we're going to use SQL Server Standard. You use Standard or Enterprise. Um, in the older versions of SharePoint, we used to be able to use SQL Express. That is no longer, is no longer supported. So we're going to uh, get ourselves a 180-day trial of Standard. If you've got a TechNet license or an MSDN volume license or a corporate key, that's great. Use whatever media you have available. But just so everyone can have it, we're going to walk through how to get the uh, free trial version. And so to do that, I'm going to switch over to my host machine. I'm going to hit the Start button. I'm going to open Internet Explorer. And then we're going to go to our good friend Bing, because yes, I am a Bing user. And here we're going to type in the Microsoft TechNet Evaluation Center. Right there. And there's a link to the TechNet Evaluation Center in your search results. Once you open up the Evaluation Center, then you're going to have to type in the keyword. And so to do that, you're going to type in SQL Server. I'll probably not capitalize it weird like I just did. And hit Enter. And then somewhere in this list, you're going to find SQL Server 2014 SP1. And so we're going to click on that. All right, so SQL Server 2014 SP1, 180-day eval, perfect. So then from here, you're going to sign in. If you've never signed in before or if you haven't done it for this one, they're going to ask you, you know, might ask you name, your title, can they spam you or not, you know, key questions. 
But as you're going through that, make sure you get the 64-bit version because they do have a 32-bit version. That's no good for SharePoint. Um, and then to keep up with this video, you want to do the ISO image, but you can also download the CAB file if uh, that behooves you as well. So I went ahead and did that download. It's about 3 gigs. I didn't think you wanted to watch 3 gigs download, so I've had that done. And then I put it over here in the D drive under June 2016 downloads. And so right here I have SQL Server 2014 SP1 Full Slipstream X64 ENU. So that is uh, the particular file you want to get. So get that downloaded and then now you've got a 180 day trial which is good because you have a 180 day trial of the windows that we're running anyway so more trials the merrier right? Yay! Alright, so we'll minimize that. We'll go ahead and close out of here. And so then we're going to actually hit pause for a second while the .NET 3.5 uh, continues. So I'll be back as soon as this finishes. Oh look at that, it finished it, it knew. I, I didn't even hit pause, it was so so good. It knew I didn't want to wait. All right, so now the .NET Framework 3.5 is there and we were successful, right? You're always looking for inst installation succeeded. So we'll close out, we'll close Server Manager and now we're gonna go up here to Media and DVD Drive and we're gonna say Insert Disk. And so now instead of the Windows disk, we need our SQL disk, right? So there's our SQL disk, we're gonna say Open. It's gonna say, hey, what do you wanna do? I want to run setup, woo woo. If that doesn't pop up, I've found sometimes with these VMs, especially when they're a little more memory constrained or otherwise hardware constrained, if they don't pop up, then just use the Explorer view down here, and then you can just drive into the D drive right natively and then manually launch it that way. So sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. All right, we'll give this just another second. So there it goes, SQL Server 2014. And then it's gonna bring us up to the guide. There it is. And so all the different things we can read, right? Lots of good reading here if you're uh, into learning more about SQL Server, right? Because I'm not here to teach you the ins and outs of SQL Server. We just want to get enough for SQL Server to be successful for SharePoint. So we're going to click on the installation over here on the left. And then we're going to say we want to do a new SQL Server standalone installation. All right, here it goes. Please wait while Microsoft SQL Server setup processes the current operation. All right, and so it says, hey, specify a free edition. <laughs> well, heck yeah, we want the evaluation. Right, remember, stay away from Express. Express is not supported by SharePoint anymore. So evaluation, we'll say next. You guys will read through all of these licensing terms and make sure that uh, you comply with all those. So yep, I accept. And turn on customer experience program. That's up to you. I'm always a big fan of sending them all my error messages, so hopefully they fix them, but that's a personal decision. So we'll say next. Now it's going to run some checks, make sure that it feels like we've done a good job. Now it's looking for some product updates. Hopefully there's not any because, well, we just downloaded the latest greatest in theory. All right, so after about a minute of pausing there, um, we found no updates. That's good. So next. So now it's going to install some setup files. And we'll probably pause through this as well. All right, and so the uh, setup file is finished, and so now it went and did a check, and you can see here that all the different pieces it's looking for passed, except there is a Windows firewall warning. And so what that's telling you is that the Windows firewall is on, and by default it's going to be blocking the SQL Server port of 14.33, and so that's something to keep in mind. We're not going to deal with that as part of installing, but when we go to connect from SharePoint for the first time, Right, we're going to have an error. So when we go to do the install or the video for installing SharePoint, then we're going to come back over to SQL Server and disable the firewall there. So that's uh, something to keep in mind that you will need to do, but we're not going to cover the context here. Cover later. All right, so we'll hit next, and we want to do a SQL Server feature installation. Don't let any of these SharePoint words or all this other stuff uh, confuse you. We're just doing a feature install. Okay, and so now it's saying, hey, what uh, features do you want to do? All right, and so we're trying to just do the pieces required to get a SharePoint server farm up and running. So we don't want to do anything extra. We're not doing any of the BI scenarios right now. This is just the core minimums you need to make SharePoint happy. And so in order to do that, we're going to do the database engine services. And then we're going to scroll down here and we're going to do the management tools complete. That's it, right? We don't need anything else, but those three checkboxes, we only had to click twice, but those three checkboxes must be checked 
in order for a successful, happy uh, SharePoint experience. So we put those in and we'll do next. All right, so it did some more checking. And so now it says, wait, where do you install? So default instance or named instance? And so we're going to do a default instance. And so that just really means, it's kind of like if you think about making the terms of a web server, right? Do you want it to live at the root? So you want to live at www.boldzebras.com? Or do you want to live in some type of slash the blog or slash the uh, FAQ? And um, so when it comes to SQL Server, you can have multiple instances. You can have multiple complete copies of SQL Server that are standalone, not relying on each other for anything, even at different versions of the product or different builds of the same uh, product running with different in different namespaces. The default instance is always just represented by the slash and that's what we're going to use here. But if you're building a larger SQL Server, uh, maybe to do multiple uh, test farms and things like that, you could have named instances. So you could have Dev1, Dev2, Dev3, and each one of those SQL Server environments have their own security, their own patches, their own version levels, their own features. Um, it's a pretty neat uh, concept of SQL Server that it can have so many different versions coexist. Thankfully here, we only want to do one, and I'm not a SQL Server expert, so I don't want to fill your head full of lies of all the different ways you can use the different instances, but just know that default instance is normal, easiest one for us to use, but it is possible to have a more advanced install. Okay, so we're going to hit next. Okay, so on this screen it's asking us what are the different service accounts that you need. And so I'm going to tell you that we want to actually go through the process. We do not want to accept a bunch of defaults here. We're actually going to create um, our own SQL Server uh, dedicated accounts. That's going to do a couple things, right? One, it's more secure, but two, it also allows if we start doing Kerberos type of uh, scenarios, so with uh, business intelligence solutions in SharePoint and things like that later, um, it's a lot easier to do uh, the constrained delegation if you've got dedicated accounts. So we're going to create those accounts, and to do that we're going to switch over to our domain controller VM. We're going to log into him. We're going to use our super secret password again. And when this guy opens up, we're then going to wait on Server Manager to open up. And now that Server Manager is up, we're going to go to Tools, and then we're going to go to Active Directory Users and Computers. We're going to expand out the Shane's Cows domain, and we're going to go to Users. Now, some people might have uh, different OUs. Maybe you'd have an OU for service accounts. All right, makes it a little easier for you to manage things. But we're not going to. We're not here to teach AD. We're not here to get into the you know best practices for AD. We're just going to make sure we do things correctly so they work without getting too lost in the weeds. So I'm going to say create a new user, and I'm going to name this user SQL, the last name of service, and then we'll make his username SQL underscore service. We're going to make his password something super secret. Probably pass that word one, but I wouldn't tell you that. And then we're going to say, you know what, the user cannot change password and password never expires. Once again, not best practices, but if you're building a test environment, right, we're using a bunch of 180-day trial keys, this is the type of things that make the management of this demo and test environment a little easier. So next, and finish. So then if you look to that SQL service account, if we go to member of, it's just a regular domain user, and that's all the permissions that it needs, so we don't have to even worry about any of that. So we'll close out of that, that's done. We'll switch back over to our SQL Server VM. And so now for account name here, I'm going to change this to our domain, which is Shane's Cows, and then under SQL underscore service. And then we're going to enter our password. Leave the startup type alone for the SQL Server database engine, right? Because this is the one I really cared about the most. Shane's Cows and SQL underscore service and then the same password. Uh, for the SQL Server browser, we're going to leave that one alone because it's a disabled service anyway, so if you have a need to turn that on, then you'll visit what account access permissions you might need for that later. But to make SharePoint happy, I set these two guys to run as a service with that password. Um, the collation stuff, we're not going to mess with that. right? Uh, SQL Server has a default collation. Um, the good news is that when SharePoint uh, creates databases, it has a specific correlation it wants, and it just goes ahead and configures all those databases to run in those. So I just leave all the defaults here alone. Okay, so we're gonna hit next. For the database uh, engine configuration, I'm gonna use Windows Authentication Mode, 
and then I'm just going to say add the current user. So that way that makes the Shane's Cal slash administrator account the uh, administrator of the SQL Server environment by default. Um, I don't want to get into mixed mode, right? So that's where you end up with those SQL accounts. You end up hearing about accounts called SA, things like that. It's a little less secure, and unless you have a really compelling reason to do it, um, you don't want to mess with that. We're also, if we had multiple drives, right? If we were building more of a production SQL Server, we might get in here and change all the different default data directories. Um, even in a good virtualized environment, you would do that. But we're just going to go ahead and continue to chug along with default settings here and leave all these at C. And then the file stream stuff is if you want to get into a situation where you have, um, instead of storing data files in the SQL database, like which happens by default, you can start to uh, use a file stream provider to, to segment those out. It's a storage thing, advanced work, uh, nothing we're going to do here. So we're going to say next. All right, did some more checking. It's like, hey, everything's good. Um, so yay, all of that is good. So we will then say install. And then we're gonna go ahead and pause the video while all the install stuff processes. So I'll see you guys in one second. See me in a long time. And with that, we're done. There's 17 minutes of your life that my pause button just saved you, but uh, good news, I got up, I took a walk. You know, I got a little exercise in while I was waiting on to finish. So don't worry about me, I'll be okay. All right, so the install completed without issue. Um, everything succeeded, so life is grand here. So we're just going to close out. And then SQL Server Installation Center, we'll go ahead and close out of that as well. And then sometimes you just like to touch it, right? So we'll hit Start, and then we'll say, oh, what are all the new apps installed? Somewhere over here, we've got a ooh, 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 SQL Server. 2014 Management Studio is new! Yay! So fire up Management Studio. And then this will bring you the login screen and we can just hit connect, right? You'll notice the server name, um, database engine, right? All the default settings are great for us. So we just hit connect. And BAMO, WAMO, SQL demo is up and running. We don't have any content, we don't have any databases of substance yet, but uh, at least it's up and running. So very cool. We'll close out of that. And I think with that, that'll finish up the video. So what we'll do next in the process, right, is we're going to go in and um, I will take a, shut down all these VMs. I'll take a snapshot of all of them. You know, name the snapshot SQL 2014 install done. Yay! And then we should be in uh, good shape to continue on with our installing SharePoint uh, demonstrations. So. Very cool. Well, as always, uh, if you liked the video, make sure you hit like, leave me some comments, you know, feedback, things you'd like to see differently. Maybe next time I do a SQL install, you'd like to see me go deeper in a certain spot. I always take that type of feedback to figure out new sessions or new uh, videos to make. So please share those as you have. And then, of course, um, you can always subscribe to the channel to get all the latest and greatest updates. And then if you have any, you know, direct stuff for me, you can hit me up on Twitter, at Shane's Cows or you can work, uh, contact me via uh, www.boldzebras.com. All right, thanks, have a great day.